Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom. Hey, family. We are excited today that you all could fellowship with us. A family, we talking about an important topic. This week, we're talking about three days, three nights, family. The truth about the resurrection, about Good Friday, about Easter, and Passover, family. So we're going to cover these topics you know when we come when you come to this channel family when you come to this ministry we like to dive deeper than what we were taught in religion and especially this week because this week is what they call resurrection week that's what they call in religious circles mm -hmm. yesterday was good friday uh sunday is easter so oh, and yeah, mambo jumbo. right <laughs> and we've been, again, when we were in religion, when we were in Christianity, we celebrated yes, we it for did. years, not really knowing what we're doing mm -hmm. <laughs> and what happened when when Good Friday came along. What did we do? I know out here in the South, ball crawfish. <laughs> Eat seafood. Eat seafood. Mm -hmm. This is what we did in the South. I don't know about everywhere else. Right. Maybe you all can share what you, you guys used to do. But we used to ball crawfish on Fridays. And hang with our families. Right. And then on Sunday, I'm going to be honest with you, on Sunday, we, although we say we were celebrating, well, people say it's the celebration of um, Jesus right. rising from the dead. The truth of the matter is, I look back and I'm, we never, we never discussed Jesus. Never discussed Jesus. it. We never. All, it was. Did y'all pull out the Bible besides going to church? <laughs> it was really, we gathered and we just ate food like mm -hmm. everybody cooked or you know or someone cooked and they invited us over and we went and the we all had, had on our Easter nice eggs, outfits yeah. and uh, yep we Easter eggs Easter, we did Easter, Easter egg hunts Easter baskets right we did Easter baskets mm -hmm. we um put on the attire you know like how you dress with the colors of Easter like pastel pastel colors and stuff like that mm -hmm. and then um did the chocolate bunnies like all of those things for the kids Right. And then I remember as a child too. That's how mm -hmm. I came up. Mm -hmm. So that that was the tradition. But I don't remember ever discussing Jesus rising from the dead mm. on Easter Sunday. I, I don't remember that. And we were in the store earlier, and I just thought about that uh, the other day when uh, we was walking through the store. And I was looking at all the Easter baskets and stuff, and I'm like, why is it that all these holidays and, and things like that is always something for us to spend money? Think about that, family. It's always something surrounding us spending money. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do like what you said. Not pulling out the Bible. Right. Not discussing the scriptures. Not discussing what actually happened, mm -hmm. family. It's always a way to spend money. And then right after mm -hmm. Easter... Then what what is what comes after Easter? I'm thinking is is it Mother's yes, Day? Yes, Mother's Day. And so that's that's gonna be the next thing. They're gonna right. be putting up a lot of things for Mother's Day. And it's like every time after one holiday they putting up right. stuff for the <clears throat> next holiday. Right. And it's just it's it's very commercial commercialized, you know. And, and let's rewind. Mm -hmm. Being that you mentioned we from the South. Mm hmm What happens before Good Friday? Ash Wednesday. Mm. <laughs> what happens before Ash Wednesday? Mardi Gras, so we can party and, and have fun and act wild mm -hmm. the whole week before we get these ashes put on our forehead, and then the Friday is Good Friday. Mm -hmm. How you going again? We're not separating the holy from the unholy. Right. We mixing everything together. Right. And right after those <coughs> ashes and putting that cross <coughs> on our foreheads, then Sunday come, and then the truth of the matter is, we're going party for Easter. Absolutely. We're, we're going to party. Yes, we're going to party that night. And when I say party, Saturday I'm talking night. about mm -hmm. clubbing party. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about, I'm just being real with you all. We right. was not always here. Mm -hmm. So we're going party. This was this is what Easter was for us in right. our young days when we were in the world. Right. So it, it was, <clears throat> we never, not one time, ta taught about, I mean, um, yeah, thought about Yahushua. We mm -hmm. just didn't. We just didn't. It's the truth. Right. So, family, we're talking about three days, three nights. Does this align with Scripture, family? Because, again, a, a lot of things in religion that they taught us, they leave things out. Again, they don't want to touch the Old Covenant, mm -hmm. don't want to touch the Old Testament. 
when a lot of the things that they were doing, that, that's where it comes from. Mm -hmm. They weren't just, oh, let's just start something new. We're just acting how we want to act, and, and, and the traditions we're doing, the customs that we're keeping, it just comes out of nowhere. Hmm. No, they were following their own custom, their own uh, feast, their own holy days, family. Right. So we're going to tie these things together. That's, this is what these pastors don't do. This is what religion doesn't do, family. Tie these things together. And we want to talk about that. So let's kind of break down that timeline. Let's see what Yahushua said about his actual death and his resurrection. Let's look at the scriptures, family. He talked about it. Let's look at Matthew chapter 12, starting at verse 40. Searching out the scriptures, family. That's what we're doing today. We're going to search out the scriptures to get these answers. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do you want me to read? Do you want me to read? Yeah. For as... Jonah, which we know in the in the English version, it says Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish. So will the Son of Man be mm. three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Mm. So Yahushua is saying, family, that the Son of Man is going to be in the heart of the earth three days, three, three nights. nights. Three days, three nights. Matthew chapter 17, verse 22, he says it again about rising on that third day, family. Matthew chapter 17, verse 22. And a lot of the scriptures we're pulling from, family, is from the New King, King James Version. Um, we have our C for we have the King James, but we like to read this version so everybody can understand. And be relatable. Right, and be relatable because thou, thou out. <laughs> right. <laughs> Down, right. dusk, and all right. that. And we have a variety of <laughs> right. listeners. So right. It's not just people who's advanced in this truth. Mm -hmm. We also have newcomers in this truth. So we have to speak for everybody to understand. Mm -hmm. So this is why we do it this way. Absolutely. So we're reading from the New King James Version family. Matthew chapter 17, verse 22. You want to read that? It says, Now, while they were staying in Galilee... Yahushua said to them, The Son of Man is about to be betrayed into the hands of men, mm. and they will kill him, and the third day he will mm. be raised up. What day? On the third day mm. he will be raised up. Mm. And they were exceedingly sorrowful. He says it again, family. The third day he will be raised up. Let's look at another verse. One more verse. Matthew 20, starting at verse 17. Matthew 20, starting at verse 17, family. Now Yahushua, going up to Jerusalem, took the 12 disciples aside on the road and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles. Who going to deliver him to the Gentiles? I don't want to say. The chief priests <laughs> and the scribes. Yes. Going to his deliver people. <laughs> his people, deliver him to the Gentiles. Okay. To mock and to scourge and to crucify. Scourge meaning to whip, beat, and all that. Mm -hmm. And the third day he will rise again. So family, Yahushua is prophesying that third day he will rise. He will be in the earth three days, three nights. So if we follow what religion says, their timeline, the, the world's timeline, it would look something like this, family. Three days, three nights, what Yahushua talked about. I wrote this little chart right here for you guys. Yeah, let, me, let me get back here. <laughs> you want here. to hold it up? <laughs> yeah. So, hopefully you all can see. Yeah, but hopefully you guys can see it, guys. Friday, Good Friday, what they call Good Friday. Let's just say, and we're using this as an example, family. These uh, times and dates are not setting, not set in stone. We're using it as an example. He, let's just say he died at Friday, 8 a.m. From, from Friday, 8 a.m. to Saturday, 8 a.m., that's one day, right, family? Saturday to Sunday, that's the second day. But how is it Easter Sunday... If Sunday night he's still in the ground because he's going to be in the in the earth three days three nights right family, that means the third day would be from Sunday a.m. to 
uh, Monday, 8 a.m. That means he would rise at 8 o'clock mm. on that third day, family. Mm. Or he'd rise on Monday. Not so much the time, but he would have risen. He would have been resurrected on that Monday, family. Mm. So the timing is off. So let's really look at it and dive deep and try to get an idea of the timing. Is this really true? How did it really happen, family? And what the scriptures, what they don't do. Mm -hmm. No, I was just going to say that what you just went over, we're only using that based on how they do it in Christianity. Right. In today's time. In today's time. Mm -hmm. And what they've been, they've been having it that, that way for hundreds of right. years. For a the long years, time. Mm -hmm. Using the what Gregorian calendar. So Exactly. And and we did something about the calendars on our in our New Year's documentary. If you haven't seen that, check it out. Mm -hmm. Um about how those times and dates were changed, family. Mm -hmm. But we need to fill in the gaps, family. And how we fill in the gaps is going into the old covenant. And a lot what they don't teach us in religion is that what was Yahushua doing during that time? Many of us, I know I didn't know. Many of us didn't know that he died on Passover. Hmm. I didn't know that. He died during a feast, family. So let's look at what he was actually doing. What was going on, family? Let's look at Passover. What was the instructions? You want to read that? We're going to start at Exodus 12, starting at verse 1. Exodus chapter 12, starting at verse 1. I can read halfway and I'm going to read the other half. Okay. It says, Now Yahuwah spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. Hmm. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all of the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, mm -hmm. according to the house of his father a lamb for a household so stop right there i just want to back up and say when yahuwah said this shall be the beginning of months this it shall be the first month of the year to you now family is not like how we celebrate now january as the first month their first month was in the springtime a bee they call that a bee mm -hmm. so it's totally different really like right now would be the beginning of right. the year According to yes. how they kept the calendar. In March. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons. Mm -hmm. According to each man's need, you shall make your <clears throat> count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a mm -hmm. male of the first year. You make take, I mean, you may take it from the sheep of the uh, from the mm -hmm. sheep or from the goats mm -hmm. now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month mm. then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight mm. and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it then they shall eat the flesh on that night Roasted mm. in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Mm. Do not eat it raw, nor boiled at all with water. With roasted in, but roasted in mm. fire, its head with its leg and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning. Mm -hmm. And what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire and thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist your sandals on your feet and your staff mm. in your hand so you shall eat it in haste it is Yahuwah's Passover mm. so family let's go back at verse uh, 6 it says now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month so remember that 14th day, family. That's important. Then the whole assembly of the congregation shall kill it at twilight. So that twilight, that's sunset, family. Huh. That's when it's about to get dark. It's not dark yet, but it's getting dark. So that's important for us to remember also, family. Hmm. 
Yah wow. saying this is his Passover. So let's start at verse 12. Let's continue at verse 12. Exodus chapter 12, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read it. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am Yahuwah. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be on you to destroy you. When I strike the land of Egypt. Verse 14, family. Exodus chapter 12, verse 14. So this day shall be to you a memorial. Hmm. So this day shall be to you a memorial. And you shall keep it as a feast to Yahuwah throughout your generations you shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance verse 15 seven days you shall eat unleavened bread on the first day you shall remove leaven from your houses for whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day that person shall be cut off from israel now let's stop right there and kind of expound on that a little bit because this this is a question that we get a lot of times too people write to us and they say you know what how do i keep this feast what am i supposed to mm. do and then family we say this all the time when it comes to the feast days we actually did a, a lesson on it a teaching on it the link is in the description for these things concerning these matters go to yah concern yeah. this how he would have you observe it won't when it comes to these things, we have to think of what Yah is trying to tell us. What's the principle behind what he's saying right. in observing these things? Right. And what was actually happening right. at the time when these things right. were going on. Right. The context. Because if we're not looking at the context and we'll say, oh, i got to do exactly how they did it. Mm -hmm. Family, we, we talk about it again all the time. We've heard stories. People are like, oh, i got to get all the lemon out of my house. Mm -hmm. They They... Get, they go around trying to get all the leaven out of their house. After the Passover path is done, they like, and they, they did everything for the Passover. They tried to do it the best way they can. Right. After they finish, they like, they find a piece of leaven. Then guess what? Oh, man, I didn't do it right. What was the meaning behind you, why you were doing it? Right. Were you doing it because, oh, I got to get the leaven out of my house? Or were you doing it to memorialize to remember what y'all did for his people? Right. Yes. That's what you that's the question we have to ask yes. ourselves, family. Because if you're trying to find the, the letter, follow it to the letter how they did it, and not looking at the context, hmm. you, we're gonna read it, family. Right. We're gonna read it all the things that they did. Are you doing it exactly to the letter how they were doing mm -hmm. it? That's the question you have to ask. Because mm -hmm. that's what the scripture says. If we're gonna justify ourselves by the law, right. we have to keep everything. We have to do it how they did it. Right. Is that the standard that we're trying to hold ourselves to? Mm. That's what we have to ask ourselves, family. Right. So let's let's keep reading. I just want to break that down mm -hmm. real quick. We have to think about what Yah is trying to tell us, what he's communicating to us. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, verse 16. Exodus chapter 12, verse 16. On the first day there shall be... A holy convocation. That's an assembly. You should have a, a set-apart assembly. And on the seventh day, there shall be a holy convocation for you. So on the first day of the feast, you're going to have a, a holy convocation. On the seventh day, you're going to have a holy convocation. No manner of work shall be done on them, but that which everyone must eat, that only may be prepared by you. It's kids riding dirt bikes. Oh, my goodness. And they're not supposed to be right, riding. right in neighborhoods. It's, it's loud if right. you guys so hear a hear large, motor. We're sorry. Yep. Um, verse seventeen. So you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for on this same day I will have brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore, you shall observe this day throughout your generation as an everlasting ordinance. In the first month, on the fourteenth day, we see that fourteenth day again. Of the month at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the month at evening. 
For seven days no leaven shall be found in your houses, since whoever eats what is leavened, that same person shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he is a stranger or a native of the land. You shall eat nothing leavened in all your dwellings. You shall eat unleavened bread. Mmm. And I want to pause right here too. I want to say this at the beginning. Family, I know some of you say about the scriptures when we're reading the scriptures, we're kind of going fast. We have moderators. Thank you, moderators, for putting the scriptures in the in the chat box. Some of you, you are listening. You're in the comments. If you want to see the scriptures sometime, you can go join us in the live chat, family, and you'll see those scriptures being put in the chat. If you're finding, uh, finding it kind of hard to keep along with the with the scriptures that we're reading. But mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to go a little bit slower so you all can follow along. Because again, we all want to come here and fellowship together. It's not just, oh, Sister Abby, y'all reading the scriptures for themselves. Right. We want you all to follow along. So we hope that you guys are all following along. So you want to continue reading for me? Read the rest of that. Exodus chapter 12, and we're at verse 21, family. It says, Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take lambs for yourselves, according to your families, mm. and kill the Passover lamb. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, mm -hmm. and strike the linen and the two doorposts mm. with the blood that is in the basin. Mm. So mm. if somebody's not reading this in context, mm. they will say, you know what? I have to do this. Mm -hmm. Kill the lamb, take the blood, mm -hmm. put it in a basin, mm -hmm. dip my hyssop leaves in the basin, and then wipe it over my doorpost for the mm -hmm. Passover. Because y'all said it is to be done for generations. Mm. Right. That's, that's what it's saying, that's family. That's what it's saying. Mm -hmm. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. For Yahuwah will pass through to strike the Egyptians. Mm. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, Yahuwah will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you mm -hmm. and you shall observe this thing as an ordinance for you and your sons forever it will come to pass when you come to the land which Yahuwah will give you just as he promised that you shall keep this service and it shall be when your children say mm -hmm. to you what do you mean by this service that you shall say it is the Passover sacrifice of Yahuwah mm. who passed over the houses mm. of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our households. households. Mm -hmm. So the people bowed their heads <clears throat> and worshipped. Then the children of Israel went away and did so just as Yahuwah had commended Moses and Aaron. So they did. Mm. So that's why we're talking about that context, family. This is when Yahuwah established the Passover mm -hmm. while they were in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Do this, put the blood over your doorpost. That way I will know, okay, mm -hmm. this is my child. This is my people. You're right. I'm going I'm gonna to protect you. you. The destroyer right. won't kill you. He's going to go kill the Egyptians. Right. That's how this, I'm going to know this sign. This is the sign that I will see, mm -hmm. that the destroyer will see. That way you will be protected. Right. In context, family. Mm -hmm. For that particular purpose. Right, right, right. For him to deliver them out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. That was the that This is what he wanted to be remembered. What he did for his children in Egypt. Mm -hmm. But there, there's also other things that he established for the Passover. So he continued. He has established a couple of more rules. Leviticus chapter 23 starting at verse 4 let's look at those things leviticus chapter 23 starting at verse 4 it says these are the feast of yahuwah holy convocation convocations which you shall proclaim at their appointed times on the 14th day of the first month at twilight is yahuwah's passover Y'all hear that again, family? Mm -hmm. That 14th day at sunset 
is Yahuwah's Passover. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread to Yahuwah. So we see, family, they kind of go hand in hand. The Passover going to be on the 14th. The very next day is going to be to start the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. So they go hand in hand. It says, seven days you must eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. So family, this is considered a Sabbath. Because hmm. remember, the Sabbath is no rest. I mean, you have to rest. There's no work. Mm -hmm. And this is what Yahushua is, I mean, Yahuwah is saying. You shall do no customary work on it. And in that uh, that video, that lesson we did a while back about the feast days and the, uh, the Sabbaths, we broke down all of that, how there were Sabbaths within the feast days, family. These mm -hmm. were called feast Sabbaths or high Sabbaths, but they were feast Sabbaths that, that was besides the weekly Sabbaths. Right. You still had your, uh, your seven-day Sabbath every week, mm -hmm. but we had feast Sabbaths that fell <clears throat> within that right. during the feast days. Mm-hmm. Verse 8, but you shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahuwah for seven days. Mm. The seventh day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let me get some water right quick. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I want y'all to think about that, family. Mm. They were doing a lot back then. It was a certain way that it had to be done. And, and this is something that we say all the time, family, and we're talking about it. That's why we're going through this, because we want y'all to think about this, because people, they like, you know what? I'm keeping the Passover. Are you really keeping the Passover? Because you're just acknowledging that that is the Passover, and, and you're keeping it on, on this day, certain date. Let's kind of talk about that, too, also. The Passover dates, the days. There, there's confusion with that, too. Mm -hmm. We, we've seen some calendars. Oh, some yes. people, they celebrated, they acknowledged it two weeks ago. Yes. Some, they're doing it this week. Some was last week. They had two weeks ago, last week, yep. this week. Some, next month. Yep, in next April. month, in April. Well, Late we April. call April. Exactly. So, it's a lot of different opinions. Mm -hmm. A lot of people doing it at different times. Mm -hmm. And it's very very important to understand what you're doing yes. when you're doing Passover yes. and we said that before it's not about I want to do it because I see everybody else mm -hmm. doing it it's about understanding what you're doing so that it yes. can be done by faith mm -hmm. understanding that we're not justified by these things mm -hmm. we're not justified by our physical works and we often say it starts here inside mm -hmm. with our hearts absolutely because that's great what you said because it's not only oh i'm just acknowledging that day mm -hmm. hey it's passover time everybody mm -hmm. hey let's acknowledge let's uh let's celebrate the feast of unleavened bread mm -hmm. leviticus 23 verse 8 is telling us but you shall offer an offering made by fire for yahuwah for seven days so the Feast of Unleavened Bread, family, if we're saying we're doing it by the law, we got to do that, that that offering made by fire. Mm -hmm. Are you doing that? Mm -hmm. Besides just acknowledging the days? Mm -hmm. Because this is, is goes with it. Yeah. And there's feast on the first day, and there's a, I mean, not a feast, there's a Sabbath day on the first day, and a Sabbath on the seventh day. Mm -hmm. But Yah gave more instructions. Yes, wait. more. <laughs> like those commercials. Wait, wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're not yes. done. Yes, there's more. <laughs> We're not done. Let's look at Numbers chapter 28. Starting at verse 16. You want to read that? Numbers mm -hmm. chapter 28, verse 16, family. Mm -hmm. So it says, On the 14th day of the first month is the Passover of Yahuwah. And on the 15th day of this month is the feast. Unleavened bread shall be eaten for seven days. So stop right there. I just, when you said that again about that 14th day, and we just talked about all those calendars, how, if, if there was order and if we were doing it correct, how is there so much confusion on which day is the 14th day? Why we have three, four, five different calendars? 
that's saying the fourteenth day is right. a different day. It's a different day, a different month, all of these things. That sounds like confusion, right, family? Hmm. So we gotta, like Sister Abby, I said, we gotta think about what we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Now we're not knocking our right. brothers and no, sisters we never who said that. to do that. Well, this is not what that. this is about. No. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to get everyone to think about it because. <clears throat> We often talk about the legalism that comes sometimes within the walk, and it's mm -hmm. not everybody that does it, but I'm saying like when um, we are trying to be justified by the law and we are taunting our brothers and right. sisters with it right. and saying we're doing it right and you're not right. and being legalistic with mm -hmm. it, you know, like, okay, because you're not doing it like me, you're not really walking in true, mm -hmm. you don't really have a relationship with y'all and all of that. Right. But the reality is, look at all of these different things and Yahoo is not the author of confusion. And so it's important to understand why you're doing exactly. what you're doing. Exactly. And our thing is, and what we continue to say, if you don't understand what you're doing, take your time with mm -hmm. it. Don't jump into it. Let Yahuwah show you the right way as you study and mm -hmm. show you the way that you should go. But do not feel that you have to jump on the right. bandwagon right. and just to, just to say that you're doing it, mm -hmm. just to feel like you're a part of something. Right. Because... Yahuwah has already accepted you through Yahushua and mm -hmm. what he did for us on the stake. Mm -hmm. This was the very reason why mm -hmm. he died for us on the stake. So he can fulfill these things for us. For us. He can complete mm -hmm. what yes. we cannot complete in the land yes. of our captivity. And we talk about the, those shadow. He was a shadow. A of these, shadow. A lot of these things was a shadow everything, of the thing to come. Everything mm -hmm. was a shadow. And mm -hmm. we, you're going to see that as we continue right. to keep reading. It was a shadow mm -hmm. of Yahushua's was return. Mm -hmm. And what, like you said, of his dad. Right. And things to come. Yeah. This is what yes. this all was about. Yes. There's a lot of symbolism in all of this, yes. family. There's a lot of symbolism. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where, where, where? <clears throat> I think you had verse... You can start at 17. What's up? You're right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, yes. And it says, and on the 15th, well, you want me to start? Go ahead, you have to start off. I'm going to just start again. Numbers so, Numbers 28, 16. Mm -hmm. It says, on the 14th day of the first month is the Passover of Yahuwah. And on the 15th day of this month is the feast. Unleavened bread shall be eaten for seven days. On the first day, you shall have a holy congregation. You shall. Do no customary work. I keep stopping you. I keep stopping you. Are we doing, are those that's acknowledging the feast days and then trying to keep it according to the law, are we having that holy convocation? That's a big part of it too. Or are you just, I'm, I'm at home doing it by myself and I'm acknowledging it. If you're not having that holy assembly, hmm. you're breaking the law. That's, that, that's, that's required. Here. That goes with it too, family. We can't forget that part. Mm -hmm. And it says, and you shall present an offering made by fire as a burnt offering to Yahuwah. What are those burnt offerings? Because it said it in Leviticus that we have to do a burnt a offering made by fire. Let's talk about what are those burnt offerings. Two young bulls. Hmm. Now this don't have anything to do with the lamb, but two young bulls. Mm-hmm. One ram. Now it goes into the lambs. Mm. And seven lambs in their first year. So first, they have they have to be one year. They can't be older than one year old. Seven. And you have to do seven lambs, family. Seven. You have seven lambs? Seven. How many bulls? <laughs> two young bulls. You have two young bulls, family? You have one ram? That's required. Be sure they are without blemish. Mm. And without Ooh. blemish. So not only you have to have them, if they got a blemish, you they you can't have you can't use them. How many of you all have some forms? Hmm. Or can get a hold of these animals. Their green offering shall be on fine flour mixed with oil. They have a grain offering too? Their grain offering shall be of fine flour mixed with oil. I can't get the bulls, you know what, because some people say the animal sacrifices, they done away with. What's stopping you from getting the grain offering? The grain offering shall be a fine flour mixed with oil. Okay, what Three else? Three-tenths of an ephah you shall offer for a bull. 
EFF is like a bundle, fam, like a, a bundle of, uh, let's say, like a bundle of corn or something, or a, a bundle, a bushel, whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And two tenths for a ram. Mm. You shall offer one tenth of an ephah for each of the seven mm. lambs. All of this is for the animals. Wow. Also, one goat as a sin offering. So now we have a goat to make mm. atonement, atonement for, for sin. You shall offer these besides the burnt offering of the morning, which is for a regular burnt offering. In this manner, you shall offer the food of the offering made by fire daily for seven days as a sweet aroma mm. to the to no to Yahuwah. It shall be offered besides the regular burnt offering and its drink offering. And on the seventh day, you shall have a holy convocation. So this is another holy convocation. Mm -hmm. On the seventh day. day yeah. So one on the first day yeah. of the high Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And then one on the seventh day. Yeah. You shall do no customary work on this one on the seventh day. Mm -hmm. That's another Sabbath. That's another That's high another Sabbath. High That's Sabbath. all within the Feast of Unleavened Bread, family. Yes. So, and what stood out too, family, is he said... These offerings, the bull, the goats, the lambs, the grain, mm -hmm. that's extra on top of the, the ones you have to do daily in the morning. Mm -hmm. So you these these other offerings, that's some extra offerings besides the regular ones that you have to do. Right. So that's a lot of things that we have to do. And all of these things had to do has something to do with the Passover. It was all about how to keep Yah's Passover mm -hmm. in the book of the law. Mm-hmm. Well, Torah, but we know really Torah is Yah's instruction, mm -hmm. period, all throughout mm -hmm. the whole scriptures. But that's what the purpose of it was. He was explaining to him, I mean to them, to the children of Israel, mm -hmm. how to keep the Passover, yes. which is what we just read, what mm -hmm. the Passover was. Yep. And remember, family, the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, they go hand in hand. First Passover, then the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Right. It's together. It follows after. Yep, the follows right after, after, the day right. after. So this is, they hand in glove, family. So we have that established. Now we go to Yahushua. Mm -hmm. This is, now we know, okay, this is what they were required to do. Right. This is why they did it. Mm -hmm. Did we see some symbolism in it? Did y'all hear some symbolism in it, family? If y'all did, y'all y'all drop it in the comments. Did, what, did y'all hear... Some of the things that Yahushua, did y'all hear Yahushua in some of those things? Mm. Because they're, he, <laughs> mm, we'll see he's this. in it. We'll see. He's in it, family. Mm. So, and so anybody try to tell mm -hmm. you that you have to keep the Passover mm -hmm. exactly as they did it in the Old Covenant Scriptures, in the book of the law. Mm-hmm. Please. Yes, please read Leviticus. <laughs> what was it? Numbers? And ask them if they're right. doing all of that. Numbers 28. Read Leviticus 23 to them and Numbers 28. We would like you to ask them if they're doing all of that. Mm. And if they are, then you have to come back and ask what's the purpose of Yahushua's death. Why did he die? We didn't need him. Man. He didn't have to die. If that's the case, if we're doing all that, then exact why, did, why did we need him? Why did we need him, family? This is why we continue to say how it's important to not boast in the law and to love all of our brothers and sisters and meet them where they mm -hmm. are and why we always encourage to have your own personal relationship yes. with Yahuwah. This is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. It really mm -hmm. is because sometimes we can get so caught up in doing these things and being legalistic that we don't even realize we're causing others to stumble. Mm -hmm. We're causing new people who are in the walk to stumble as well because many of them don't understand that terminology. Mm -hmm. Right. They don't understand, right. okay, let me keep the, the, the Passover this way, that way. Because mm -hmm. when you really go and start studying it, it's a lot. I mean, it, it's, it's something that can confuse someone. Mm -hmm. Because when you start looking at different brothers and sisters and then you see one is doing it this way one is doing it that way mm -hmm. then it can become confusing right. to a babe somebody right. who's new in the walk mm -hmm. it's not we're, again we're not discrediting anyone we're not putting our brothers and sisters down for Passover if they're doing it beautiful mm -hmm. that's them and y'all yes. we're not mm -hmm. saying that we're just saying it's important for you 
to have your own personal relationship with Yah and let him show you how he wants you to serve him mm -hmm. and not man because we're fallible man is going to get it wrong mm -hmm. we know in part and prophesy in part absolutely so, absolutely so let's jump into Yahushua what what was going on Let, let's let's we got an idea of, of what the Passover was so let's see what Yahushua was doing and remember he already prophesied the son son of man is going to be in the earth three days three nights family so let, let's play this story out let's start at matthew chapter 26 starting at verse 17 it says now on the first day of the feast of unleavened bread the disciples came to yahushua saying to him where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the passover and he said Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Yahushua had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When evening had come, he sat down with the twelve. Now as that as they were eating, he said, Assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. So we see, family, that as the evening came, that was the Passover. Now we know when we read in, in the uh in Leviticus, it said the Passover was what? On the 14th day, family, right? And the 15th day was the be the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So now we're at the Passover, that 14 day at that evening. Mm -hmm. This is what Yahushua and the disciples were doing. This is what they were preparing for, and they ate the meal. So the meal happened at evening time, right? Mm -hmm. They sat down and ate the lamb. So let's continue reading in the story. We at evening time, family. Matthew chapter 26, we're dropping down in Matthew 26, starting at verse 36. You want to read that? Mm-hmm. Matthew 26, verse 36. It says, Then Yahushua came with them to a place called Gethsemane mm. and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over there. Mm. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Mm. Stay here and watch me. I mean, and watch with me. Mm -hmm. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father. What? Oh, my father. I thought he was the father, though. Oh, my father. He's praying to his father, fell on his face and prayed to his father. He hmm. said, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Hmm. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Whose will? He said, not as he will, but as the father will. His father. As his, his father's as you will. will. Hmm. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? Could mm. you not watch with me one hour? Mm -hmm. Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed saying, Oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away mm. from me unless I drink it, your will be done. Mm. He's he said, talking a lot to his father in there, right? And he keeps saying, your will. Hmm. He said, your will be done. So hmm. that meant, and also the verse, bef I mean, like a couple of verses before that, what we just read, he said, not his will, but his father's will. But his will. father's will. So hmm. right here he's saying, your will be done. Not his will, but his father's will be done. Be done. Hmm. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Hmm. And if y'all, you can stop right there. If y'all asking why we're saying that, we, we're saying that because we did a lesson a couple of weeks back about the mystery of the Messiah family, where some people say that Yahushua is, and, and Yah is one. They're the same person. Mm -hmm. But we've seen that he's making a distinction. Mm -hmm. that, that's why we're kind of saying that. So mm -hmm. we just want to share that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, he continues to make a distinction 
all throughout the scriptures between him and his father. Yep. Mm -hmm. It says Matthew 26, and this time we're, we're going to 44. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so he left them, went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Mm. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is mm. at hand, mm -hmm. and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Mm. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Mm. So family, let's kind of break it down. Remember, they ate the Passover meal that evening. Mm -hmm. After they ate the meal, they went to the Garden of the Gethsemane. Yahushua went to the Garden to pray. Same evening. And he's saying, behold, he's like, man, y'all can't stand watch for me. I'm about to be betrayed this night. Y'all keep a lookout. Mm -hmm. So this is all happening that same evening, family. Let's continue to read the story. Mm -hmm. Matthew, we're dropping down again. Matthew 26 in the same chapter, starting at verse 57. And those who had laid hold of Yahushua led him away to Caiaphas. Kiaf the high priest, Caiaphas, the high priest. Oh, I couldn't get that out. <laughs> Where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Peter followed at a distance to the high priest's courtyard, and he went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Now, y'all listen to this, family. They captured him same night. High priest, Judas betrayed him, turned his back Uh. Uh, betrayed his master, turned him into the high priest. Now they're bringing him to Caiaphas' house. Let's continue reading at verse 59. Now the chief priests, the elders, and all the council sought false testimony against Yahushua to put him to death, but found none. Even though many false witnesses came forward, they found none. But at least two false witnesses came forward and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of Yah and to build it in three days. Mm. Mm. So we're seeing that the high priest, the, the elders, they're trying to get people to bear false witness against Yahushua. Mm -hmm. Verse 62. And the high priest arose and said to him, do you answer nothing? What is it that these men testify against you? But Yahushua kept silent. And the high priest answered and said to him, I put you under oath by the living Elohim. Tell us if you are the Mashiach, the son of Yah. Yahushua said to him, It is as you said. Nevertheless, I say to you, Hereafter you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Mm hmm. Mm. So they, they ask him. Remember, Yahuwah said he's no he's not like man where he would lie. Right. The high priest is asking Yahushua, are you saying you're the son of Yah? Mm -hmm. He's saying, hey, that's what you're saying. <laughs> this is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 65. He says, then the high priest tore his clothes saying, he has spoken blasphemy. How he's speaking blasphemy? He's not saying he Yah. Saying I'm the son of Yah. That's what he said. Which when we read in uh, what was it in uh, the Old Testament, Yah said, "Y'all are all my sons. Y'all are all sons of Yah." Right. Mm. Yep. Yep. He says, "Look now, wait up." Verse sixty-six. Then the high priest tore his clothes, saying, "He has spoken blasphemy. What further do we have of witnesses? Look now, you have heard his blasphemy. What do you think?" They answered and said, He is deserving of death. Then they spat in his face and beat him. And others struck him with the palms of their hands, saying, hmm. Prophesy to us, Mashiach, who is the one who struck you? Mm. Mm -hmm. Pure evil. This is important, family, because you were talking about this earlier when you're saying to our brothers and sisters, this is why we have to understand what we're doing. And this is why Yahuwah, when he told the Israelites, he's like, your feast days, your, your Sabbaths, I'm, that's nothing to me. Mm -hmm. 
Because y'all doing it for yourself. And look what they doing. In pure wickedness. Pure wickedness. Look at what they're doing. Remember, family, this is Passover. This is Passover. This is, the feast is about to begin. Mm -hmm. Look what they doing on the Passover, family. Mm -hmm. Wickedness. This was Israelites. Israelites. They trying to get people to bear false witness against Yahushua. Mm -hmm. Getting others to, to join them in their sin. Mm -hmm. Y'all want to kill Yahushua on the Passover. Mm -hmm. This is not Gentiles. This is Israelites mm -hmm. that want to do wickedness, harm their brother on the feast day, on the Passover. Mm -hmm. That's why y'all say that don't mean nothing to me. Because look, y'all heart not right. right. Y'all want to do all this wickedness. Right. Get your heart clean first. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. That's why we have to know what we're doing, family. Mm -hmm. All of... Y'all, you could do every feast day in the book. If that heart not clean, you still got sin in that heart. You still hate your brother. It's y'all look at that as filthiness. Mm -hmm. It's nothing to him. He's still contending, He's, exactly, striving, exactly, you know, and, and just wanting to strife with your brothers and mm -hmm. sisters, and wanting to lift yourself up as though. Oh, like boasting, like we continue to say, boasting in the law. They all. violent. They being violent, hitting them, beating them. They being violent, family. Oh, but but yeah, but y'all y'all gonna honor that. Mm -hmm. He gonna honor us our feast, even though we being violent, right? Now mm. we're not saying this is what that's what this is what everybody's doing. We just trying to um, get a message across, mm -hmm. and you'll hear it, you know, as we continue on in the message, but. Just, just pretty much bringing out what is the right, most important things right. and what's not. Mm -hmm. Like the, what, what was the the purpose of the Passover mm -hmm. and what we should be focusing on in these times. Absolutely. So let's kind of keep breaking down our timeline, family. Remember, this is still in the evening. A lot happened. That's a lot happening one evening, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they one ate the, evening. Right, they ate the Passover, family. Ooh, now. Mm -hmm. The Passover, eight Passover and everything. That was a holy day. That's supposed to be holy, set apart. Look what y'all look what's in y'all heart. Look at what y'all doing. They ate the Passover meal. Yahushua and his disciples. Yahushua went praying in the garden. They came and captured him that same evening, took him to Caiaphas' house. They beat him up, slap him, put him on trial basically. Saying he's committing blasphemy. All in the same night, family. Wasn't Judas at the table with him too for Passover? Yep. Hmm. <laughs> he just disappeared that same night. Went get the chief priest and came back get him that same night. That, that devil is something else, man. That devil is something else. Just slipped away when you sat down and broke bread with your brothers. And slipped away and went do, do what you did. Hmm. 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 Mm. That's, that's how it's... Mm -hmm. They say that devil is a serpent, right? Yes. Slippery is. serpent. Mm. That's how mm -hmm. he works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But again, family, this was Passover evening. So let now let's go to the next day. So the morning time was still the same day because we have to remember something too. According to how the Israelites kept the time, the day from nighttime to that daytime, that was considered one day. It's not like how we do now, 12 o'clock at night to the 12 the next day. Wait, That's so our day. So the next, you said the night. Well, till 12, what is it? Um, the evening sunset, to evening? Yep, evening to evening. Yeah, that's what I want to say. Right, yep, right. Evening to evening. So mm -hmm. when that morning came, that's, that's still considered Passover day, family. Right. So let's look at what happened when morning came. Matthew 27, starting at verse 1. You want to read that? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it says, when morning came, all the chief priests and elders of the people plotted against Yahushua to put him to mm. death. And when they they had him, when and when they had bound him, mm -hmm. they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Pontius Pilate. Mm -hmm. Oh, Pontius mm -hmm. Pilate, the governor. Mm -hmm. So when morning came, the chief priests and the elders brought Yah. This what how he predicted. This is how Yahushua prophesied that the scribes and the chief priests they're gonna bring me to the hand of the Gentiles to kill me. Then this is what they did. Mm -hmm. They delivered him to Pontius Pilate to kill him. And that's something they like. No, we're not gonna get our hands dirty. Right. We're gonna let we're gonna let the Gentiles do it. Mm -hmm. It's cold, huh? Yeah. But y'all the one put the, the whole thing into action, right? Y'all started everything, right? 
Matthew, let's continue reading. That same day, family, I mean, that, that same Passover day, it's daytime now. They brought him to Pontius in the morning. Now he's going to get crucified. Matthew chapter 27, we're dropping down in this chapter, starting at verse 45. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Yahushua cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama shabashtani, that is, my Elohim, my Elohim, why have you forsaken me? Mm. Why have you forsaken Why me? Why have you forsaken me? Then he's saying, my Elohim. Or you can say, my Yah. <laughs> my Yah. My Abba. My Abba. Why, Why have, have you, you forsaken, forsaken me? me? Mm. He it's, 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 weird how it's weird how Yahushua keep making distinctions between him and his father. He said, why have you forsaken me? So can, we forsake ourselves? Can Yah forsake himself? We have to think about that, family. But let, let's look at this, family. It says, now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour. So how uh, they kept time back then, the sixth hour was like about noontime. It's not like how we do it today. It's one o'clock, one, two, three, four, five o'clock. They kept time like in, in, uh, like in different phases. So the ninth hour was like 12 o'clock. Then the, what was it said, the ninth hour? I mean, what was the sixth hour was... 12 o'clock noon and the ninth hour was about 3 o'clock so we can say at about 3 o'clock he died right it wasn't evening yet family so let's say 3 o'clock he bred Yahushua breath his last breath so it wasn't past I mean not past so it wasn't the Sabbath yet because remember how it was laid out in Leviticus regarding Passover and the feast family the 14th day was Passover right and then it said the following day was the first day of unleavened bread. The following day would start that evening. Mm -hmm. That would be what? A high Sabbath, right? right? The first day. It said that first day you will do no work. That's a feast Sabbath. Mm -hmm. A high Sabbath, family. So where are we? Let's continue reading. We're at Matthew 27. Let's drop. We're on. Let's start at verse 47. Some of those who stood there, when they heard that said, this man is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink. The rest said, let him alone. Let us see if Elijah will come to save him. And Yahushua cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his ruach. So... That was it, fam. That's, that's when Yahushua died. Around 3 p.m. Passover during the day. Hmm. That's hmm. when he died, family. <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. Now to us, for us, it would be the next day. I'm talking about in America. That's how mm -hmm. we would look at it. Like he died the next day. Right. But it's really the same day. The it same was still day. Passover because it was morning time. It, it was, and it would be say from evening to evening. Right. So... It they ate be. the meal that evening. Then the, the then that morning time came. It was still it was just Passover morning, right? Because <laughs> Passover started that evening, right? And then he was crucified that morning. He was mm -hmm. on trial, crucified, and then at three o'clock, that's he gave his last breath. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is kind of where the confusion starts, family. This is where we kind of have to look at. Okay, what was going on? Was this during the feast day or was this was the regular Sabbath coming up? Because this is where the, the confusion starts, family. So let's let's talk about this. What happened after he died? Let's look at that. Luke chapter 23, starting at verse 50. You ready, you ready to read that? Now behold, there was a man named Joseph, which has Joseph, a mm -hmm. council member, a good and just man. Mm -hmm. He had not consented to their decision indeed he was from Arithmetha, mm -hmm. Arithmetha mm -hmm. a, a city of the, the Yahudis mm -hmm. which is Jews here who himself was also waiting for the kingdom of Yah this man went to Pilate and asked mm -hmm. for the body of Yahushua then he took it down wrapped it in linen mm -hmm. and laid it in a tomb that was hung out of the rock 
where no one had ever lain before. That day was the preparation, and Sabbath drew near. Mm. Sabbath drew and near. And the Sabbath drew near. What so Sabbath? what Sabbath are we talking about? Is this the, the weekly Sabbath? Mm. Because that's kind of what that's that's how they get the well, we go from Friday, Saturday, Sunday is Easter. That's a, that's the time that that's how they're breaking it down right now during this time. But was in it America. the week? Yeah, in America, in current times. But was it the weekly Sabbath according to the scriptures? Mm -hmm. Let's read that. John, we have to look at John chapter 19, verse 31 to get the answer, family. John chapter 19, verse 31. It says, therefore, because it was the preparation day that the bodies should not remain on the stake on the Sabbath. Y'all listen to this, family. It says, for that Sabbath was a high day. And, and the Yahudis asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Now, we have to look at that verse, family, say, for that Sabbath was a high day. That high day means that's a feast Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Because remember, they ate the Passover on the 14th. The next day coming up, which is in the evening, that was the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is a feast Sabbath, because we read it in Leviticus and Numbers, that on that day, you are to do no work, mm -hmm. right? So that's our Sabbath. So this was the high Sabbath, family. It wasn't the weekly Sabbath. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I need some water. <clears throat> mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, that one was John 19.31. Mm -hmm. Might be in the comments already. Right. <laughs> Moderators. Mm-hmm. Yep, Leviticus 23, 7, it, it tells us about that day. It says, on the first day you shall have a holy congregation. You shall do no customary work on it. That's talking about the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, family. And this was what they were talking about. Um, <clears throat> so I hope y'all getting that, family. Let's look at John chapter 19, verse 41. It talks about it also. You want to read that? No. Nah. <laughs> now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid so there they laid Yahushua because of the Yahudis which is the Jews mm -hmm. in English preparation day for the tomb was nearby mm. Mm. it was the preparation day so we know that the day before Sabbath, family, right? That's preparation day. That's because you're not supposed to prepare anything, right? You're supposed to have your stuff ready to go and everything for whatever you're going to eat or whatever you're going to do. That's your preparation day. And this is what they're talking about. And we have to remember that the Passover, that's not a Sabbath day. The Passover could have, could have been considered a preparation day too because we saw that, remember when he told his disciples, go prepare the... Uh, the meal for me and stuff mm -hmm. and they were going out and about in fact the, we saw how the uh, the the Hebrews the high priest and all that they did all this stuff on Passover <laughs> they killed Yahushua on Passover they did they put right. him on trial on Passover mm -hmm. so it, it was like a preparation day it wasn't the Sabbath yet right so this is deep so how does that align with what we know now, because they tell us Friday, that Saturday, that weekly Sabbath, that's the weekly Sabbath, right? The Saturday. Mm -hmm. How does that align with the, with the prophecy that he's going to be in the tomb three days, three nights? And let, let's see <clears throat> if, okay, if it was Friday. Because the scripture said they took him down before the Sabbath came, right? They took him off of the, uh, off of the stake. So that if, if, according to these times, that would be Friday afternoon before the evening time, right? So let's look at our, our little board again. Let's change the time. <clears throat> if it's Friday evening, that's three days, right? Three days, you got to be in the earth three days, three nights. Mm -hmm. That means that, that's, we got to add more time to what I put up on the first time. I put it at Friday morning. Mm -hmm. So if it's Friday evening, this would be way Monday. 
that he would have risen, right? Monday evening sometime. Monday evening or Tuesday morning, family. If what is Friday evening? If he died and they took him down from the... You from doing the, it You doing it based on... Oh, no, according to the scriptures. And if they're saying Friday, how they saying now, Friday, they took him, he died on Friday evening. Mm -hmm. I mean, Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. And the Sabbath was approaching, meaning they're saying the weekly Sabbath. Right. Which we see, family, they're saying that it's a high Sabbath. It's a right. free Sabbath. It's a different so type of exactly. Sabbath. So exactly. It, so it's different. And, and we're going to see that it's different because... We have to remember when they went to see him, when they went to see if Yahushua was still in the tomb, family. Mm -hmm. Let's look at that. This is, let's look at Mark. Uh, let's look at Luke. 24, starting at verse 1. You want to read that? It says, now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women with them came to the tomb, bringing mm. the spices which they had prepared, but they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Mm. Then they went in and did not find the body of Yahushua. Mm-hmm. Mm. It says, now at the first day of the week, family, very early in the morning. First day of the week, is, is that what they say, that's a Sunday or our time now, they would say that's Monday, right? <laughs> sometimes they say right. Sunday, sometimes, sometimes they say they Sunday. Say sometimes they say Monday. So let's go with Sunday. Wait up! He just, according to their time right now, he died Friday, Friday evening. Mm -hmm. I mean Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. How does first thing Sunday morning? He already out the tomb. That's he not even in the ground a, a, a day and a half, two days. So that timing is off, family. That cannot be right. Even if we were to judge it based on how they did the days and the scriptures, it mm -hmm. still would be off. According right. to how, you know, I'm just saying according to like if we were if we were to say Friday, Saturday, and Sunday like they do now. Right. It still would be it off. It still would be off. The prophecy wouldn't line up, family. It wouldn't it wouldn't line up. It wouldn't up. be in the in the in the earth three days, three nights. It doesn't line up. The truth of the matter is this Sunday, <laughs> the day that they put Easter with, hmm. it's just a pagan day. Yes. It's a pagan yes. day. It's pagans that took a pagan name, yep. Easter, yep. and which we're going to be doing a documentary mm -hmm. on, um, a little short documentary soon on Easter. Mm -hmm. And you'll see what we're talking about, where Easter actually comes from. Mm -hmm. It's pagan. It's all pagan. And they put it on let's, let's okay, Sunday. Mm -hmm. Put it on Sunday a lot, just like they did with Jesus and Christmas. Mm -hmm. December 25th. It was a lot of pagan gods' birthdays. So they just took it and said, okay, we'll put Jesus on this day. Mm -hmm. This is how they've been doing a lot of these pagan holidays. Right. Days that, you know, they really worship their false gods. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <clears throat> another verse, another story tells says the same thing. Says something similar. You want to read that? Matthew, Matthew 28, 28. Mm -hmm. verse one, starting at verse 1. It says, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began mm. to dawn, Mary Madeline, Madeline and the other Mary came to see the tomb, and behold, there was a great earthquake, mm. for, a, for an angel of Yahuwah descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it his countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow mm -hmm. and the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men but the angel answered and said to the women do not be afraid for mm -hmm. i know that you seek yahushua <clears throat> who was crucified um he is not here for he is risen, as he said, come, mm -hmm. see the place where Yahuwah lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. Mm -hmm. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Mm -hmm. Behold, I have told you. Mm -hmm. So, family... Brother Rashi, Sister Abia, what are y'all really saying? 
family, let's, let's break this down right quick. Here are three things that we know for certain. One, Yahushua ate the Passover, right? He ate the Passover meal. Scriptures told us Passover begins on what? 14th, 14th day of that month. Right. First day, the 15th day, which is the next day, that's the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And that is a feast Sabbath, family. That's a high Sabbath. We know those two things for certain. We know the third thing for certain, that the women went to check the tomb on the first day of the week. Mm -hmm. Yahushua was not there. Mm -mm. So for the prophecy to line up that he was in the tomb, he was in the earth three days, three nights, mm -hmm. it could not be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm -mm. What are we doing today, family? That is not true. What Sister Abby I just said, what, what's established now is pagan, is tradition. Mm -hmm. It does not align with the scriptures. Mm -hmm. We have to fit those three days, three nights in between that time from when he was put in the tomb mm -hmm. to when they went to check if he was still in the tomb. Right. Three days, three nights had to have passed by, family. Mm -hmm. That's the only way it could fit. That's the only way Yahushua could fulfill his prophecy. Right. Not what we have today. Now, some people say it's different days. They just speculate. We don't right. know. You'd have to do your own studies. that Because it doesn't give us a certain day. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. But we know it's not what's going on today. Right. We know that, <laughs> we know that for certain. We know that for we certain. We know that much. <clears throat> but... Mm -hmm. We talked earlier about the Passover and, and are we doing it right? How are we supposed to do it? Um, why are we doing it? Mm -hmm. And we talked about it important that our brothers and sisters understand what they're doing when they're keeping feast days, when they're keeping the Yah's holy days, why they're doing what Yah is trying to get them to understand. Mm -hmm. And Paul kind of addressed the same thing. Let's talk about that. <clears throat> First Corinthians Chapter 5, starting at, he talked, because you remember the Passover talked about leaven, not having leaven in your home and stuff like that. Right. The leaven. What, right. what is that leaven? Mm. Paul talked about it. Mm. Let's start at verse 6. It says, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, starting at verse 6. It says, your glorifying is not good. Do you not know that a li little leavens leavens the whole lump? Therefore, purge out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, since you are truly unleavened. For indeed, Mashiach, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. For indeed, Yahushua, our Passover, was sacrificed for us this is what it talks about when we was when we was reading was it was it numbers when it said you had to sacrifice and do these offerings mm -hmm. for the atonement of your sins right. this is what paul is saying yahushua is for a shadow he's the sacrifice he's all those things for us yes in the old covenant scriptures mm. it was always a foreshadow and as you guys remember if you could remember when we were reading in the mm -hmm. new covenant scriptures when did it say Yahushua was sacrificed. I mean, when all of this took place, when they took him. Mm -hmm. They took Yahushua in the evening time. Mm -hmm. And you remember in the Old Covenant yes. scriptures. What did it tell us about the yep. lamb? Yep. They, you had to go get it at the evening. You had to go get mm -hmm. it in the evening time. Mm -hmm. It was all a foreshadow of Yahushua's mm -hmm. coming and what he would do and his sacrifice. It, everything in the Old Covenant scriptures is a foreshadow. Mm -hmm. It was w of what was to come. Mm -hmm. This is what it was all about. Absolutely. He is now, it says right here, the Passover. Mm -hmm. Our Passover. The Passover he's lamb. Our Passover says, lamb. He was, he's, for the Yahushua, our Passover was sacrificed for us. Mm -hmm. And then it says, our Passover. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now listen to verse 8, family. It says, Therefore, let us keep the feast, 
not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, mm. but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Mm. It sounds like Paul is talking about some spiritual things. Spiritual. Because remember, and I was talking about this earlier, family. What the Israel remember the Israelites they keeping the feast and doing all that. What how they did it? Mm. Wickedly. Wickedly. Violently. Violently. Malice. Yes. That's how they kept it. That's what Paul is saying. Like, that don't mean nothing. You keeping that wickedly. You doing it with malice. You doing it with violence. That means nothing to y'all. Mm -hmm. He says, but keep but with the keep the unleavened keep the feast with the unleavened bread of sincerity mm -hmm. and truth. But do you hear the spiritual aspect of it? <clears throat> Yahushua was our Passover, right? Mm -hmm. Where where is that at here? When it talked about Yahushua, when it says which one? Where is it's it? Right here. Because I don't have on my glasses, mm -hmm. you all. So I'm. Yep. Actually, it says Yahushua is our Passover. Mm -hmm. So today, that's our Passover. Yes. It is Yahushua. Yes. And he was the Passover lamb <clears throat> as well. Mm -hmm. These things are telling us this. And then, again, this is spiritual mm -hmm. now. Because we know we don't have to do a lamb anymore. Absolutely. Yahushua is the Passover. Mm -hmm. And then, he goes on to say, let us keep the Passover. Mm -hmm. But then he goes on to talk about the spiritual mm -hmm. aspect of it. He said, not with malice and wickedness. But with sincerity and truth. Mm. This is the spiritual aspect. This is what they were trying to teach us. Trying to tell us yes. the entire time in the new yes. covenant scriptures. That it was spiritual. Remember now you all. The new covenant is the laws on our hearts. Mm -hmm. This is why we continue to keep saying it's a spiritual thing. So we do believe in this thing. That it's okay. to, t to yes. When it comes to the Passover. <clears throat> You know, to honor it yep. and to be able to you to, to see it as a memorial yes. for what has happened, what Yah has done for his yes. people. So we don't want to take that. No, I mean, get you, I mean we don't want you guys. We to love think, it when we see it. When right. we see our brothers and sisters acknowledge like it. Because, a, and even right, if you're gathering, gathering yes, you, you, you're it. doing it as a gathering and as a <clears throat> memorial. Yes. Stuff like that. Yes. But not like this is what I'm I trying know, to be exactly. justified and by. And I'm going to be boasting in it. Right. When you're doing it like that, family, no. This is this is you not it. it all for the wrong reasons. Because as you see, it's really spiritual, you mm -hmm. all. It's a hard thing. It's a hard thing. Yahushua is our Passover yes. now. Yes. And our and, and what again? What they were trying to speak to us is to get the heart right. Get the heart mm -hmm. right. And so this is what we're saying. We're not against people who are doing it, but this is why we keep saying mm -hmm. we do not boast in the law you don't hear us talk much about all of the different feast days mm -hmm. and stuff like this because we want you all to develop your own relationship yes. with yahuwah yes. study to show yourself yep. approved yep. and let him teach exactly. you and show you the way he wants you exactly. to go because we all got to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling exactly. and that's what we do and Absolutely. we here as yep. we're going to keep saying we talk about Having a close relationship with Yahuwah mm -hmm. and repentance, turning away from sin here. Yep. And we, we love the feast. We love Yah's feast. It's like what Sister Abby Yah said. It's a time to remember what Yah a did memorial. for his people. Yep. But we look at it as a memorial, not looking at it as, oh, we got to follow this to the letter and we got to do this, that, and the third. No, we're looking at it just like how he said in the scripture. This day shall be a memorial to you throughout your generations he wants us to remember what he did for us what he did for his people family this is what we're saying and not just to be like oh that don't matter or whatever, right or right the yeah. old covenant scriptures no. no it did happen this is what he did thank mm -hmm. you yah but also connecting it to the new covenant right. and right. what yahushua did for us yes. and not trying to take away what he has done for us mm -hmm. It, he it, he fulfilled everything for us. Yes. And we are not justified yes. by our works. Because if we not. say that, this, we don't need them, right? We don't need them. We don't them. need them, family. We really don't. We don't need them. We're if we not say, guess what? I'm going to do exactly what it said. Why I need Yahushua? You don't, you don't need them. Because I guess what? 
my abilities, my my works, that's what's gonna get me in. Right. And that's not. That's not. It's your it's your belief mm -hmm. and it's you getting that close relationship with Yahuwah and allowing him through his Ruach and Yahushua to purify yes. that heart. Yes. So that our so that we may be set apart as he is set apart. Mm -hmm. I want to say holy as he has holy. Right. I mean he is holy. Right. Because you think about it, what did what we said today, what they were doing, what they did to Yahoo, they was playing church. Yes. Basically playing church. I look good on the outside to what everybody. What we would call today right. playing church. Exactly. <laughs> I look good on the outside, but inwardly I'm wicked as all oh, yes. get out. Oh, yes. This is and we see so much, right. you know, like mm -hmm. with the external, but you know, so we don't, we don't, no. we don't, we don't boast in it, no, nor no. do we want to or mm -hmm. desire to, but we love all of our brothers and sisters. Yes. And we, cause we understand that we all working out our own salvation with fear and trembling mm -hmm. and we want all of us to make it. We Absolutely. pray we all make it. Cause yes, again, indeed. as we say, y'all don't wish that any no, of us should perish. perish. He no. wants us to make it. He wants his family. So that was our lesson. Uh, again, thank you to all the moderators. Thank you all, family, for joining us today, fellowshipping with us. Uh, but we just want to thank, too, our brothers and sisters who, who allowed us to, to interview them for their oh, testimonies. Yes. Hallelujah. Powerful. We're hearing we so many powerful stories. Powerful testimonies yes, coming to all, so stay tuned. People emailing us and saying how those testimonies that they saw so far, it, it's impactful. It's made an impact on them. Mm -hmm. So we thank you all, family, and uh, we hope you enjoy them because mm -hmm. it's important that everybody sees that because yes. it says it shows that everybody's journey is different. But right. we can say that you know what, they're different, but they're somewhat the same. We right. still went through kind of went through the same thing. A similar, I mean, similar, right? Well, and then just the fact too is that it's showing everyone what Yah is doing in the lives of his yes. children mm -hmm. and they're transitioning from where they come from to right. where Yah is taking them. Mm -hmm. And that's very important because it shows Yah's love. It shows Yah's mercy. It mm -hmm. shows his forgiveness. All of these things through our testimonies. Absolutely. So if we have anyone else who have a powerful testimony that they would love to share, mm -hmm. reach out to me, um, yep. the, our sisters and brothers. You can reach out mm -hmm. to Brother Rashi. Russia, but stay tuned because yes. we do have some beautiful testimonies of our brothers and sisters, and we want you all to support them. Yes, because this is very brave what they yes. are doing. Yes, very, very brave. brave. They are very yes. brave for sharing. Very brave. Not everyone no. will do what they are doing, no. family. So, so may y'all bless yes. them. You know, yes, yes, that's it's, that's definitely brave yes. of them. They're doing it to help you all, yes. to help the body. That's to why be I, a vessel, yes. for you all, yes, and to esteem y'all, to, to exactly. glorify y'all. Exactly. So that was it, family. We hope you enjoyed the lesson. We hope it was edifying. Um, we hope you enjoy the rest of your day, family. And again, thank you all. We'll talk to you on the next one. We love you. Shalom.